What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and had a great holiday season. It is a great day today. I'm in my t-shirt. It's early January. It's about 62 degrees outside today and that is why we are reviewing the 2023 Subaru Solterra Limited. Huge thank you to Mike C over at Stallman Subaru of Sterling, Virginia for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in driving this as a demo or interested in buying any Subaru product, I'll be sure to have Mike's information on screen as well as in the description box box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. First, let's talk about the exterior and performance. The 2023 Subaru Solterra is Subaru's first entry into the EV segment. And let's take a walk around and see how they did. So, like I said, this is a 2023 Subaru Solterra Limited. And this particular one has been painted in the $395 Harbor Mist Pearl. This paint color looks absolutely sweet in the direct sunlight because it has a dark blue metallic flake in it. And I'm not sure if the GoPro will pick it up, but man, this thing looks absolutely beautiful in the direct sunlight. But let's start over here at our headlights because we do get LED headlights with automatic high beams, as well as LED daytime running lights and LED fog lights towards the bottom of the front end. And just like any other EV, the whole front end is closed off because you don't have a motor that you gotta feed a ton of air. So you do get a closed off body color grill with a black surround. In your black surround is where you'll find your forward facing camera that goes along with your 360 degree view camera which comes standard on the Limited. You got your Subaru emblem, six forward facing sensors, and a satin silver trim piece towards the bottom of your front end, as well as you do get 8.3 inches of ground clearance with the Solterra. Just like the 2023 Subaru Outback, you do get some satin black cladding that flares in just below your headlights. In my personal opinion, when I first saw this thing, I thought it looked a little bit funky because it kind of blends the front bumper and the front fender um, with this satin black cladding. But the longer that I've been around it, I actually think that it looks pretty good in my personal opinion. So you can see it flares up just below your headlights then it leads into your wheel arch molding. I think it looks pretty sweet. You also get some of that cladding also on your charge port. Like I said, I think it looks pretty sweet. Uh, but again, just my personal opinion. Right here, you get some EV badging. Just behind your EV badging is where you will find your charge port. So you do get some regular charging right here. And then just below that, you have your DC charge port uh, for fast charging. Apparently when plugged in with the DC fast charging, you can get 80% battery in just under one hour. I'm going to close that and let's take a look at this EV badging. So you get chrome EV badging, and then you get a, you know, a lighter blue or a royal blue, I guess I would say, uh, background on the EV. You get a four wheel independent raised suspension with the Solterra. And then with the limited trim spec, you get 20 inch gray with machine finish aluminum alloy wheels wrapped in 23550 Bridgestone Terranza EL450 tires. Give you guys a view of the tread pattern on those tires as well. You can see that's one of your six forward facing sensors. And then right here, you get some black mirror caps with integrated LED turn signals. These mirrors are heated power folding. You get your blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of the driver side mirror and on the upper right hand side of your passenger side side view mirror. And then towards the bottom of your side view mirrors. I'm not sure if the GoPro is gonna pick it up, but you have a camera right there as well as a puddle light. That camera goes along with the 360 degree view camera that you get when you get the limited trim level. But let's take a look at the roof line because you do get black roof rails, black window trim, body color door handles, and some cladding at the bottom of all your passenger doors. Again, you get some satin black wheel arch moldings at the back end and then up top here, you get a body color shark fin antenna as well as a body color split design roof spoiler with aerodynamic fins. This is interesting because I haven't seen this on really any other vehicle, but I think it works with the Solterra. I kind of, I just like the way that it looks in collaboration with your subtle black spoiler on your trunk lid. It looks really, really sweet. Then you get those two fins, LED tail lights, and you can see with your roof spoiler or with your trunk spoiler, you have a black trim piece that flows right into your other LED tail light, and it all comes together really well. And then you get a trim piece that goes down below both of your outer tail lights. So you get that one, 
and then you get this one as well. The best way that I can kind of describe what the rear end of the Solterra looks like is it's kind of like if a new RAV4 and a new Lexus NX had a baby. That's kind of how I would describe the rear end. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with me in the comment section down below. But that's just the best way that I can describe the rear end of the Solterra to those of you guys who have never seen one in person. Right here, get your Subaru emblem. Just below your Subaru emblem, you have your rear view camera. You do get a power lift gate, which will open up here in a second. Get your Subaru lettering, get your Solterra limited and EV lettering on the right hand side of your power lift gate. You get six rear view sensors total here on the back end, which I'll show you guys now. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you get a satin black rear bumper with two reflectors but let's pop open up that power lift gate this thing kind of reminds me of a hatchback although it's not considered a hatchback it just looks like when you open up the power lift gate it has like that hatchback ish design with that sloped roof um again it's not a hatchback but it just looks like one to me you could probably fit four carry-on suitcases here flat and if you stack them you might be able to fit five or six but again you have that sloping roof design so you'd have to stack those additional suitcases towards the rear seat back of the second row because of that sloped roof design i don't think um, you might be able to i'm not sure though i don't know but you i don't think you'll be able to stack um, a second suitcase back here then you get your all-weather floor mats let's pop open under here you get some more storage down under here and then is there anything down under here here. looks like you have um, a spot where you have your tow hook and then under here I don't know uh, it doesn't look like you have a spare tire but uh, yeah that's about it for the back Let's close that you can either close the power lift gate and lock the vehicle by pressing on this button right here or you can just close the power lift gate by pressing on that button which is what we're gonna do here today again let me know what you guys think. Is this a RAV4 and an NX baby rear end? Let me know in the comment section down below. But let me know also what you guys think of the 2023 Solterra. I think, honestly, it looks like a regular vehicle from the outside, which is something that I appreciate. I don't like how a lot of EV manufacturers make their EVs look so outlandish and so you know, not normal compared to a regular gas powered vehicle. This is what EV manufacturers need to do. Make it look like a regular vehicle and more people will buy it. Trust me, uh, I really like the design of it and I'm not just saying that, I really actually do. But again, let me know if you agree or disagree with me in the comment section down below. But with that out of the way, let's move into performance. Popping open the hood, pretty much unlike any other EV that I have seen besides the Chevy Bolt, you can actually see the electric motor as well as the battery pack. So I think that is pretty cool. But popping open that hood reveals that 72.8 kilowatt hour battery pack that goes to two electric motors. Total output is 215 horsepower and 249 pound feet of torque for a zero to 60 time in six and a half seconds. And if you guys were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 111 MPGE city, 93 MPGE highway for 222 miles of range when optioned with the limited and 20 inch wheels if you guys get the premium with the 18 inch wheels i believe you get an additional six miles of range six to eight miles of range something like that but if you guys have enjoyed the video so far today please give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button i'm really gunning for 10,000 subscribers and i cannot do that without your guys' help so i greatly appreciate it if you guys would take a second give the video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button but with that out of the way let's move into the interior all right guys, moving into the interior. This is a 2023 vehicle after all, so you do get keyless access. All you gotta do is walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock. You can tell the vehicle unlocks because the side view mirrors fold out. You can also lock the vehicle by running your finger across these two hash marks located on the door handle and you can tell the vehicle locks because the side view mirrors fold right back in. I'm gonna show you guys a look at the key fob. You got your lock button, unlock button. I believe this is like a pre-conditioning system, like remote start, and then press and hold on that. will pop open your power lift gate. But let's take a look at what's going on here on the interior of the Solterra. So you do get Star Tex interior materials, which is basically a water repellent upholstery. Uh, and it looks and feels pretty much exactly like leather, but you can see you get some light gray leather. You got your door handle, two memory seat adjustment settings that you get when you get the limited, and then pressing on this button will power fold in your side view mirrors. I guess the vehicle isn't on, so it's not gonna do it at the moment. You do get automatic up and down windows at all four corners, your unlock and lock buttons. This will restrict 
your passenger window privileges. You get your power side view mirror controls located right here. A nice spot you can close the door with. And then not that much storage space at the bottom of the door panel. Harman Kardon speaker surround. You get a power driver's seat. Again, this is what the seat looks like. Very, very comfortable. You get some like blue on the outsides of the seat. Very good bolstering. And then you get some light gray perforated leather going down the center of the seat. If you guys do want ventilated seats, you are gonna have to step up to the touring. Again, this is the limited, so you do get a heated steering wheel, heated front seats, and heated rear seats. With the touring, you get heated front seats and ventilated front seats along with your heated steering wheel and heated second row seats. But let's step into the interior and let's see what's going on here. Um, so again, just like any other 2023 vehicle that has keyless access, all you gotta do to start the vehicle is push your foot down on the brake and push to start. That's another thing that I do like about the Solterra, um, whereas some other EVs, the way that you turn them on is all you gotta do is step in them and they're already on. Then once you step out, they're off. I like this where I can control when I turn it on and turn it off. Again, that's just personal preference, but I do like that. Right here, this is to turn your automatic high beams on or off. This is to open up your power lift gate. Right over here, this is your turn signal stock as well as your headlight control stock and your fog light control stock. So let's take a listen to our turn signal. That's what the turn signal sounds like. And then right now, you can see we are in headlights automatic. If I twist this up once, that turns the daytime running lights always on. Flip that up all the way, that is headlights always on. Um, I like to leave it in automatic. And then if I flip this down like that, that will turn the daytime running lights off. Whereas on my mom's 2019 Nissan Rogue, you cannot turn your LED daytime running lights on. And I do not like that. Right over here, you have your fog light controls. Right now, that's fog lights on, that's fog lights off. Let's take a look at our steering wheel because this is an interesting looking steering wheel. You get a leather wrapped steering wheel. Like I said, it is heated. And then you have like this downshift paddle and this upshift paddle that helps you adjust between like four different regenerative braking. Um, I guess intensities. So if you have it all the way on four, that's the most intense regenerative braking. Then again, you can see you have four different levels of that. These buttons, so this button as well as these four arrows control your seven inch LCD instrument panel. So if I go through here and I press on that, you can go throughout your different screens. So that's like messages, settings, trip stuff, music stuff, uh, adaptive cruise stuff, and your power consumption stuff. This is kind of what your screen looks like over here. You got your odometer. That's the ambient exterior temperature. That is the current time. That's your speedometer. This lets you know how much power you're using right here. And then if you go on this part of it, that lets you know how much power you're capturing when you're coming to a stop. That's how much range we have at the current moment. That's like uh, your fuel gauge, which you can see it's your battery gauge. Um, and then you get your lane keeping stuff and all your different stuff, uh, safety stuff located right there. This is very interesting to me because it's not like any other vehicle. And this on the outside part of the review, I liked how they made the outside look like a regular vehicle. But if you guys are gonna make the outside look like a regular vehicle, please make the inside look like a regular vehicle as well. So when you're driving, uh, it does take a little bit of getting used to when driving with this screen. However, once you get used to it, you get used to it. You know what I'm saying? But it does take a little bit of getting used to. Uh, but once you get used to it, it's like second nature. Over here, you have your windshield wiper control stock. Obviously, you can control the front windshield. All you got to do, pull back on that, and that will wash the front windshield. Let's take a listen to our horn. That is what your horn sounds like. Right over here, this is to go into your phone. So if I press on that, that will pop your phone stuff up on screen. This is volume up, this is volume down. This is to speak to the vehicle so you can basically tell it, hey, turn on the air conditioning. Turning on automatic air conditioner. And then it, it will turn the air conditioner on. I'm gonna turn it off for sound sake, but that's what I mean when I say speak to the vehicle. Right over here, this and up is your adaptive cruise control settings. And then right here, you have your media controls. Pressing on mode will switch between AM, FM, XM, um, as well as your Bluetooth, auxiliary jet, all that kind of stuff. And then this will switch in between your different radio presets. Again, get your upshift and downshift paddle. I just went over that. And then just to the right of your steering wheel is where you will find your 12.3 inch infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. It works very, very well. So we'll go into that, cancel, blah, blah, blah. But again, you get wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. You can go into your navigation stuff. You can go into your different audio stuff. I can enable audio, uh, but I don't want to it 
uh, to have it be too loud. Uh, but you can see that's your audio stuff. I do wish they did have a volume knob because they only have volume buttons. Uh, but you can see, then you go into your phone stuff. You can go into your different car stuff, charging schedule, vehicle alert, trip information. And then you can go into your different settings. This is a Wi-Fi capable vehicle. So you can see Wi-Fi right there. You can go into your all your different settings as you can see on screen. Uh, and then just below that, this is your climate control stack. So you can turn, right now I actually have the heated seats and the heated steering wheel on automatic. So it will turn them on automatically dependent on the ambient exterior temperature. You can also turn that off as well. Um, and then if I click on that, you have three levels of adjustability for your heated seats and two levels of adjustability for your heated steering wheel. Obviously this is the same, uh, three levels of adjustability for the heated seats and then you get your all your different climate controls and then you get your odometer uh, trip reset button stuff right here so you can reset it by pressing and holding on that and that will reset the stuff uh, and then you can go in between the brightness and or dimness of your instrument panel by pressing on these buttons so this will dim it and this will brighten it so that's what that does press button start or push button start you get your two hvac vents hazard button that's what your hazards sound like. And then this is S pedal drive, which is basically like one pedal driving. I'll show you guys that on the driving portion of the review. This will hold you in place in traffic. So the vehicle will literally hold the brakes for you and it will hold you in place. This is your electronic parking brake. This is your gear shifter. It's just actually very interesting. So if you guys want to switch in between your different gears, if you push down, that puts you into neutral. But if you guys want to go into reverse, twist it to the left. If you guys want to go into drive, push down and twist it to the right and now we are in drive you can see your 360 degree view camera right here that is your forward facing camera however if i put it back into reverse now that's your rear view camera and your 360 degree view camera push p to go into park we're pushing p and then you can go in between your different drive modes by pressing on this button right here so you have power eco and normal mode those are your three different drive modes this will pop up your 360 camera as well as um, all your different you know camera stuff right here so you can see that is what your camera looks like. That's your 360 cam. And then that goes back into that. Kind of cool. And then over here, X mode, basically like your off-road mode kind of thing. So you can go in between your different X modes. So snow slash dirt and deep snow slash mud. Those are your different X modes. And then I believe this is a kill descent control. And then this is your traction control on or off. You get a wireless charging pad with the limited USB A port and then closing that. It's kind of like a clear kind of thing. And you can still see your phone if you have this closed. Piano black, you're definitely gonna see a little bit of uh, of smudging again another spot you can set your phone right here usb c port and a 12 volt slash 120 watt um, charger right there for your car and then the passenger also gets a usb c port as well and then you get a good amount of storage space down in here you get two cup holders and then you get a center fold down armrest um, so let's pop that open you actually have a very good amount of storage space down in here uh, so i'll show you guys that See if we can't pop this out here. Very good amount of storage space down in there. Uh, and then you have this little divider right here. That's pretty cool. And then over here, I noticed, I don't believe that you get a glove box with the Solterra. So uh, if you guys do, correct me in the comment section down below, but I don't believe that you do. This is like a cloth type of material. You get a auto dimming rear view mirror with your universal garage door opener located right here. You can turn your auto dimming mirror on or off by the push of the button right here. That's me, say what's up. Then you get your Subaru Starlink stuff up here. If I press on that, that will call roadside assistance. This is gonna turn the driver light on, passenger light on. This will turn in uh, all the interior dome lights and then pressing on that when I open up the door now, the interior lights will not turn on. Press that again. Now when I open up the door, the interior lights will turn on. You got a Bluetooth mic pickup for your Bluetooth phone. Passenger gets one as well. Passenger also gets an Opu handle. Driver gets an Opu handle. You get a visor with a vanity mirror and a vanity light. Let's see if these things slide. Let's see. No, these do not slide. So just keep that in mind. Uh, same thing for your passenger. You get a vanity mirror with a vanity light. But because they don't slide, they have this little slider right here. So let's pop that out and then boom, you can see you get a little slider right here and the passenger gets that same thing. That's about it for these front seats. Pretty cool. This is my view from about my eyesight. Um, that's my view out the side. 
This might be at the back. You get a blind spot right there, but again, you do have blind spot monitoring. But I do want to read over a couple things um, here on this particular Subaru. So with the Limited, you do get EyeSight, which monitors traffic, optimizes cruise control to get your lane keep assist stuff, get your pre-collision braking stuff, and a dynamic radar cruise control, which is your automatic cruise control. Uh, and then you also get a 360 degree view camera. You get advanced park, which is a self parking system, heated steering wheel, heated front seats, heated rear seats, Harman Kardon premium sound system. You get a power driver seat with memory, the wireless charging pad. And again, this is a Wi-Fi hotspot capable vehicle. This does um, technically have symmetrical all wheel drive. You do get a motor, electric motor in the front, electric motor in the back. Um, so that is all wheel drive and they call it symmetrical all wheel drive. You get your two X modes as well as S pedal drive, which is your one pedal drive. I do want to read over some safety and security features um, here, which I'll show you guys here in a second. So reading over some safety features, some safety features include symmetrical all wheel drive, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, vehicle stability control, dynamic radar cruise control with lane tracing assist, parking support brake system with pedestrian detection, safe exit assist, emergency driving assist, advanced frontal airbag system, driver and front passenger knee airbag, curtain shield airbags with rollover sensor, front seat side airbags, four wheel anti-lock brakes, you get a tire repair kit, and acoustic vehicle alerting system. I'll show you guys some comfort and convenience features. I'll put those on screen right now. Uh, but let's talk about the MSRP of this particular 2023 Subaru Solterra Limited. So the pricing of this particular 2023 Subaru Solterra Limited, as this one is spec, is $50,432. This thing literally only has two options on it, and they're really um, not all that, I guess, important. Uh, and there's two options uh, is the $176 all-weather floor liners as well as the $141 all-weather cargo mat. So those are literally the only two options on this particular Solterra Limited. But let's pop open up these rear doors and let's see what it's like back here in the rear. So again, you have automatic down windows and you got automatic up windows in the rear. Pretty much uh, the door panel looks exactly like the front door panel minus all the controls. Get your Harman Kardon speaker back here. And then you get a little bit of storage base at the bottom of your door panel. You can see the backs of the seats are blue leather, which looks sweet. You get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat, seat back pocket behind the passenger seat. And then here is what the rear seats look like. I love the two-tone between the light gray and the dark blue. I think it looks absolutely phenomenal. And again, these seats are perforated, but they're not ventilated rear seats. Obviously, you do get a fold down armrest with two cup holders and a great spot to set a phone this is also nicely padded i'm five foot nine i got plenty of leg room plenty of knee room and a good amount of headroom left over here is a opu panel obviously this guy gets an opu panel as well as a spot you can hold your dry cleaners another spot you can hold your dry cleaners you get a dome light and then you got your two um rear heated seat controls with three levels of adjustability so only the two outboard second row seats are heated the middle seat is not heated usb-c port and another usb-c port two hvac vents and honestly very good amount of space back here for people and storage honestly for that trunk space so yeah very very nice vehicle uh we're gonna take this thing for a drive because i'm assuming that's what you guys have been waiting for so you know we've talked about the exterior we've talked about the performance and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior so i want to see what this thing's like to drive as i'm assuming you guys do as well so i'll see you guys in the driver's seat all right guys and now on to the driving portion of the review and this thing rides very, very nicely. You know, um, I just did the speed bump test, which I'll uh, insert into the video right now. We usually start the videos right here and we go over these speed bumps at roughly five miles an hour. And uh, we rate them on a scale of one to 10. So I was going a little bit faster than five there, um, but we'll check it on this one. We'll go about five. So let me slow down. I'll give this thing a 7.4 on a scale of 1 to 10. So yeah, the suspension is actually pretty compliant. So while you're driving it on the street and stuff, uh, it soaks up bumps very, very nicely. It's just when you go over like, um, you know, a really sharp speed bump, 
that it does feel a little bit firm compared to some other vehicles. However, in day-to-day -day driving like we have here, uh, it rides very, very nicely, very compliant, um, and just perfectly tuned for daily driving. So I love the way that this thing feels. I like the low-end power. Um, you know, it's not the most powerful EV that I've driven, like the Volvo XC40 feels a little bit more powerful than this thing does. Um, however, again, for day-to-day -day traffic or day-to-day -day driving, if you're driving from school, you're driving to work, you don't really care about uh, the power of an EV, you just want something that has zero emissions, um, then this thing's got more than enough get up and go you know what i mean like it's gonna be it's gonna move faster than you know your your brother's honda or your mom's honda or something like that um, so it's definitely got a good amount of low end grunt to it for sure i do want to show you guys though that you can see i have 194 miles of range as of right now however if i turn the climate on we're at about 62 degrees and i've got the fan turned all the way up so bear with me here for uh you guys are going to worry about the audio but you can see the range drops to 150 51 miles so I think that's pretty cool that um, you know when you have this on versus when you have it off you can see how much the rain jumps now with the HVAC system off we have 194 miles of range so I like how it the range adjusts dependent on if you're using the HVAC so I think that's pretty cool but uh, I do want to show you guys the different regenerative braking levels um, so you get your upshift and your downshift paddle so if I downshift now this is the third most aggressive setting so you can see watch the speed drop as I let off you can see it drop in speed now I'm gonna downshift and uh, we'll go into our fourth most aggressive or the most aggressive setting so we can see see how it drops faster in speed in the fourth um, setting so this is like your upshift so now this is just like cruising so now when I let off the throttle it just cruises like a regular vehicle there's no negative torque so when I downshift once now there's a little bit of negative torque to it. Um, obviously we're also going uphill, um, but there's definitely more negative torque and you can feel it when you let off the throttle. You can feel it kind of just start to slow down and you can feel a little bit of resistance in the drivetrain. Um, whereas if you have it just all the way in your first setting, there's pretty much no resistance. So downshift once, I can feel the resistance immediately. I can feel a little bit more resistance. You can see how fast the speed is dropping. And then we're going on a downhill here. So I'll go back into your first setting. So you can see we're just uh, coasting at the moment, downshift once. So this is my second most aggressive setting. Now this is my third most aggressive setting. And you can see we're slowing down, going down a hill and then downshift one more. And then this is my most aggressive regenerative braking setting. You can see how much we're slowing down on going on the downhill. I can feel the resistance. Um, so I think that is pretty cool. However, when you're driving an electric vehicle, or at least when I drive an electric vehicle, I personally like to drive with one pedal driving on. It makes just the driving experience. Um, it takes less effort to drive with one pedal driving on. So you can see this button right here. This is like your S drive mode. So if I go into that, that is basically one pedal driving. It's just Subaru's way of calling it S drive. It's one pedal driving. And I'll show you guys that once this light turns. So we'll give it here. Uh, we'll give it a minute. All right. Light's about to turn green. I'll do a little mild acceleration. All right. We got a green light. I'll do a little, a little mild acceleration. Nothing crazy. Not like floored, but you know, probably 70% throttle. We'll do that now. And you can see how quickly it accelerates to 50 miles an hour but you can see i have one pedal driving on so right now i have my foot on the accelerator now i'm just going to let off totally and watch the speed see how the speed starts dropping so you basically you have to if you're driving with one pedal drive you have to modulate the throttle so i, I don't know uh how many of you guys know what one pedal driving is or have ever driven a vehicle with one pedal driving but basically with one pedal driving on you have to modulate the throttle so you give it gas like right now i'm just maintaining speed so i'm basically holding my foot in the same spot however if i want to slow down a little bit i just let off the throttle a little bit and you can see i start to slow down um, so you basically with one pedal driving you just have to modulate the throttle and I can already tell um, Some of you guys are probably not gonna like one pedal driving because it's very very different from driving just an internal combustion engine vehicle We're on an internal combustion engine vehicle. You let off 
the throttle all the way and you just start to coast. Whereas if this, I let off the throttle all the way, I start to brake. So that's, you gotta modulate the throttle with S drive or uh, one pedal drive. So I personally really like one pedal drive because it takes a little bit of effort out of the driving experience, which is something that I appreciate. You know, I'm not a huge EV fan. However, one pedal driving is something that if I'm driving an electric vehicle, I will 100% have one pedal driving on because I think it's a very nice thing to have. And it just, like I said, just makes the driving experience very, very easy and pretty much effortless. So right now, I'm just modulating the throttle and we're going about 49, I'm gonna let off, start to slow down. So pretty cool and uh, something that I personally really enjoy when I'm driving an electric vehicle. But pretty much other than the fact that this thing makes no noise and the fact that it has one pedal drive, you can't really tell that it is an electric vehicle from the outside part of the, uh, from the outside's point of view, which is something that I really like. And when I was on the outside part of the video, I said, more manufacturers need to make EVs that look like regular vehicles because if you guys do that, you're gonna sell more of them. Don't make like some outlandish kind of design like you find on like the, uh, I believe it's the Hyundai Ionic. I think those things look weird. They look kind of like a DeLorean mixed with like a Kia Soul. I'm not really a big fan of that, but I like the way that this thing looks. This thing looks like I said, like a mix of a RAV4 and a Lexus NX. So it looks like an ordinary regular vehicle, which is something that I personally appreciate when uh, it comes to the design of EV vehicles. I cannot stand an EV vehicle that looks like uh, a totally outlandish EV vehicle. So I appreciate Subaru making something that looks normal um, so it doesn't look super outlandish. Again, that's just my personal opinion, but uh, I really like the way that this thing drives. It drives, again, just like a regular vehicle, uh, pretty well insulated from the outside world. Like right now, I got no music on. Obviously, we don't have an engine. Um, so there might be some active noise cancellation stuff going on here, or just the insulation of the vehicle in general is very, very good. Um, but yeah, again, that's one pedal driving. I didn't hit hit the brake at all. I just let off the throttle and you can see we're coming up on a stop. So I really like the one pedal driving and I love how well insulated this thing is from the outside world. It's like, you don't want to get into an EV that doesn't make any noise and then have tons and tons of wind noise. So uh, thank you Subaru for making something that doesn't just have tons and tons of wind noise. Um, and you can see just, it accelerates to the speed limit just effortlessly. And you know, again, this thing doesn't have all the power in the world. This thing isn't a Tesla Model S Plaid. However, it just accelerates to the speeds that ordinary people do every day. It accelerates to those speeds pretty much instantaneously. You know, you're not going to be doing zero to 100s all the time. You're not going to be doing uh, a 60 to 130 mile an hour pull all the time, at least if you're just, you know, buying this as a daily driver. So I think this thing's got more than enough get up and go. Six and a half seconds, zero to 60 is more than enough get up and go for a daily driver. If you guys don't have, um, you know, you don't have a lead foot. If you guys have a lead foot, you're addicted to speed, kind of like I am, um, then, you know, you, you want the Tesla Model S Plaid, something that's gonna feel like literally a roller coaster. But again, for those of you guys who are buying one of these as a daily driver to drive you to and from work, to and from school, it's a great daily driver. And yes, it has 222 miles of range, so it's not like the most amount of range. But again, if you're, work is 50 miles to work, 50 miles home, you still have 122 miles of range left over. Um, so yeah, I think this thing would make for a fantastic daily driver. I love how easy it is to drive. I love how easy it is to park. I love all the safety features, blind spot monitoring, pre-collision braking, adaptive cruise control. I mean, it's just basically fully packed with safety features, with technology, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, Harman Kardon sound system. I love that blue on that Mustang. So. Yes, you can step up to the Touring, you can get your ventilated seats and the additional creature comforts that you get with the Touring, but again, you're gonna have to spend another, you know, four, five, six thousand uh, dollars in order to step into a Touring. So I think this is the sweet spot in the Solterra lineup. You get the Premium, which is like the base model, then you get the Limited, which is what we have here, and then the fully loaded one is the Touring. Again, I think the Limited is the sweet spot for the money uh, because you still get a ton of different features, and I think, honestly, you get um, just the right amount of features. So if you don't care about ventilated seats and a couple other things, um, then I think the Limited is the Solterra to get. It's got great power, sound system sounds great, um, wireless charging pad, I mean, it's got a lot of things. Yeah, you don't have a pano roof on this one. You get a pano roof when you get the Touring, but again, 
Um, love the way that this thing drives. It's just It's so easy to drive. It's so easy to accelerate. I love the one pedal drive. Just an overall fun vehicle to drive, especially if this is your daily driver. So we're gonna skip to a zero to 60 test before we end out today's video. So let's skip to that now. Well guys, apparently my draggy is dead because it did not want to connect. So that is a little bit unfortunate, but we're gonna go into here. And uh, all we're gonna do is pull up to our spot. We're gonna go into power mode and uh, we'll line up on our line and then we'll just gun it. Once we get to zero, we'll gun it in three, two, one, floored. Sixty, and that was pretty quick to be honest with you guys. It's fun, like the initial grunt of the electric vehicles is just so fun because it really just pushes you on the line and it just squats the vehicle and it feels like you're just on a rocket ship and you know obviously you know it wasn't the fastest acceleration once you start getting up past like 30 miles an hour it does start to slow down just a little bit obviously but just like that i'm merging into traffic and it just accelerates so so well you can see i merged right in it got me right up to speed um so yeah this thing is fun to drive man it's got more than enough merging power more than enough get up and go and honestly it handles very well as well you can see this bmw guys uh really ripping the heck out of that x5 and uh it's funny in one of my wrx videos i got absolutely smoked by um one of those x5s but that's besides the point this thing rides fantastic it's got great power you guys saw that zero to 60 time um yeah very this thing would make for a very good daily driver it's super easy to drive it's actually fun to drive as well it's got tons of safety features it's got wireless carplay i mean it's i went over all this stuff with you guys it's a great daily driver and something that would make for a great car to get to school get to work to drop the kids off you guys get the gist of things but that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button i'm really gunning for 10,000 subscribers and i cannot do that without your guys's help so if you guys would please take a second give this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button i would greatly appreciate it but again that's it for today's video i'll see you guys in the next one peace